I can see lot of students have joined, lot of learners have joined. I will not call you student because I know most of them, most of you are working right now, uh, and some of you might be learning as well with us. So great. Uh, today we have with us Tarun, who is studying in Germany his masters, and uh, I was just discussing before this call how to pronounce his university's name. Let me try it once and see if it is right or not. It's called Otto von Grieke. University of Magdeburg. Okay, great. <laughs> I don't know how well I have pronounced, but yeah. So great. So I think last time when we met uh, Tarun, uh, we discussed uh, about uh, how he decided to go to Germany, and he was very very forthcoming about his choices in terms of which other countries he looked at. Finally, how he decided uh, to go to Germany. Uh, we also discussed the process of. Applying to a free university in Germany, and what is the difference between public and private university? Uh, today, I think I'll focus more in terms of the life, how it starts in Germany, and once you have got an offer letter, what do you have to do before you finally come, and then what happens when you come. So we'll focus on those details as well as few questions which will keep coming. We'll, we'll pick those questions uh, before I start asking my questions. I'll just give you the. Overview of the programs which we are running and uh, uh, how it helps students in going Germany. I think Germany has been uh, one of the great countries when it comes to power of economy. Uh, it's the fourth largest economy in the world, uh, growing very fast. Largest economy in Europe. A lot of jobs being created, but. It has not been as glamorous when it comes to students for thinking about studying abroad. Uh, most of them associate uh, Germany with free education, which is true, which is very much true in public university. But then there is a there are other private universities in Germany who also provide high quality education at a very affordable price. So not everybody will be able to go to public universities. Uh, there are private universities available, which are very affordable. Uh, one of the university with which we work is called IU, which is International University of Applied Sciences, uh, where you can start in India with us online uh, in three courses currently. Uh, one is the data science, the other is in the machine, uh, the space of uh, cybersecurity, and third is in the space of management. All these programs uh, start online with prestigious universities, colleges in India. One is the Triple IIT Bangalore. The other is with IMT Ghaziabad, which is AACSB accredited college. And after doing your one year in India, you go to Germany and you complete your year at IU, which is got two campuses, one in Berlin, the other is in uh, Bad Honef, which is closer to a city called Bonn. And the pricing is very affordable. The pricing in Germany is only eighty four hundred euros. And also, they have a very very attractive payment plan where you can even pay monthly once you go to Germany. So. It's a very affordable education which you can get, uh, and we also save money to you because when you study one year in India, you are paying Indian cost, no living cost. So that's the whole program. But yeah, uh, that's about the program. And now we start the questioning of Tarun. Okay, very good. Uh, I I see already how many levels do we need to have for German taught program. So let's say a student. So now I start with this first question. Yeah. If a student wants to get a German taught program, what level of education in German proficiency he should have? At least B one. At least B one. Do they get admission B one? In some cases, uh, but if you have better than B one, uh, B two, then definitely C one is a difficult. It's a little difficult to achieve. In okay. less amount of time, but if you have C one, then nobody can stop you in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> then you are already a German. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, almost. Yeah. But to get to a B one or B two or C one, I'll say, or at least B two and C one, that means you are highly motivated individual. Yeah. Uh, to do a German language studies based of India, so that you can save money. So I really appreciate if someone does that. Um, Okay, so let me ask a question which I wanted to start with, but I picked up this question first. Uh, once you decided, like once you have mm -hmm. got the offer letter from the university, what was the process in India you had to follow uh, for applying to your visa? 
which one of the question which we get what will be the process after let's say i get an offer letter what do i need mm-hmm. to do okay so uh, to uh, book the visas appointment slot you do not need an offer letter at least that was the case when i applied okay and uh, since i lived in north india there was a lot of competition for slots but okay. there is only one embassy for entire north india and delhi so i booked i think 5 months earlier i oh. booked in september and my visa appointment was in feb and that was the okay. earliest appointment i could get oh um, okay yeah but that is not the case in the south india there the visa appointments are easily available as compared to delhi mm-hmm. so yeah uh, you book the slot and okay. uh, once you have your offer letter with you then there is a form that the visa uh, embassy asks you to fill it up and bring some documents along with it all the documents are also mentioned in the form itself okay. so you just fill the form take the necessary documents and most importantly your offer letter and then you go to the uh, visa appointment and depends it's an individual case to case basis what they ask you in the interview sometimes they ask people to write a motivation letter kind of thing but okay why do you want to go to germany most of the times they don't so once your interview is done uh, they'll inform you within a month or so that okay your visa is done you can submit your passport uh, either at vfs or at the embassy directly and then your passport will be stamped with visa I think now the process is a little bit changed. Uh, they don't do interview. That's what oh, my okay. understanding is. That you have to come and uh, get an appointment with VFS, give the documents, and if they need, they will call you. Otherwise, they don't. They will give you visa. Uh, but just one question before that. I think before you mm-hmm. apply for visa, you have to do a block account. How, how was it done in your case? Uh, is, is the money earlier deposited, or is the money deposited after you get a visa? uh so you don't get visa if you don't show the amount in blocked account okay. so that is the norm uh, but uh, in some cases uh, let's say that you are not able to show your blocked account amount on your visa appointment date you can tell them that i have opened the account the money is on its way and i can submit that document in let's say one week so they hold your application for a week until you submit that document and then only your visa will be processed for the uh, but it won't be processed until unless you show the blocked amount money and and to open the block account is it done mm-hmm. online or do you need to go to any bank it depends on the service that you use uh, most of the people i know who are here they came through kotak mahindra so there you just go to kotak mahindra and they know the procedure Uh, already so they'll open an account for you they'll ask tell you the amount that you need to submit based on the conversion rates and then uh, they generate a letter saying that okay we have your blocked account money uh, for this many euros and uh, there are other services uh, which are available online so i used one such service uh, where i just uh, opened an account online they sent me documents online itself and then i transferred the money through my own bank account in punjab national bank to that account uh, it was in germany itself so okay. yeah there are services like that as well so right now fintech i'm sure this be available for students to look at apart from kotak mahindra yeah in case in case student deposits in kotak mahindra bank will he get a kotak mahindra bank Uh, card in germany or uh, is is this amount stays in india and only when you open a new account in germany then you can transfer no uh, kotak mahindra has some sort of partnership with deutsche bank in germany okay so once uh, you come to germany your documents are in order you open an account in deutsche bank and then you uh, when you open the account you mention that your blocked account is in kotak mahindra in india so then kotak transfers your money from india to deutsche bank account okay and do you need health insurance before you get your visa or uh, is it like 
you have to get it after no uh, you just need your travel insurance when you are going to uh, submit your passport to okay. get visa stamped but the mandatory health insurance that is there in germany or entire europe that you need only after you come here so we are discussing only travel insurance which is much, yeah. much cheaper than health insurance yes yes okay so uh, so you you go deposit your uh, document wait for the germany german embassy to call you come and get the visa and after that you book your travel uh, no uh, you need to book your tickets when you are submitting your uh, passport for stamping okay you so need to show your yeah travel dates because they need okay. a starting date right uh, when should your visa start so let's say if visa takes 2 months so you need to block your tickets 2 months before that no no i do not mean that uh, what i mean is uh, there is an uh, roundabout estimate that you get your visa within 4 to 6 weeks okay so um, you can book a ticket accordingly that okay 2 months later i will go and 6 yeah. uh, weeks later when they call you that okay submit your passport for stamping then you show them the tickets that okay i have booked the tickets uh, for this and this state and they'll stamp visa accordingly got it so yeah. you have to book the ticket now one thing which i wanted to know more about is the accommodation uh, mm-hmm. do you need to book your accommodation before you get visa or after you get visa for visa accommodation is not needed uh, they do not ask that you have any accommodation or not okay. uh, but uh, for your own Uh, personal satisfaction you can look for accommodation while in india itself there is no guarantee that you will find it but in some cases people find uh, and if you don't find it uh, or a permanent accommodation you can look for temporary ones uh, when you come here so yeah and search for permanent after coming here but for visa it's not needed let's say you land at the airport now how do you <laughs> decide so you go to a hotel i'm assuming or and then look for temporary accommodation yeah that is the one option definitely uh, hotels or there are youth hostels also or okay. airbnb so there are options like that you can book mm-hmm. them the other is uh, you are not the only student in the university right <laughs> so there are a lot of other students and there is a high chance that when you will be going there will be semester break going on so a lot of students will be visiting their home countries so they yeah. uh let their room be available for somebody to stay temporarily so there are facebook groups for that people can look around there and most of the times people find uh, accommodations like this i think i know only one person in the three years i've been here who stayed in a hotel or a airbnb after coming otherwise everybody either had a permanent accommodation or stayed in somebody else's room okay and obviously you will find seniors there uh now one question i think uh, someone has asked is what is the packing essential for student for first time travelers so if you are first time traveling to <laughs> germany uh, how much cash you should bring at first thing this this um the bureaucratical process here can take up to 3 weeks so i think 1000 euros somewhere around that plus minus 10% should be fine to sustain and my other suggestion will be to bring a forex card just for emergency in case you run out of your 1000 euros and then somebody from india can uh, deposit some money into your forex card and you can use that i believe now the atm card should be working if you can just enable your international withdrawal and on your atm card you can use that as well yeah you can but the uh, conversion charges are very high on very high. atm cards so a forex card is much more suggested recommended <laughs> got it got it and yeah. apart from that what packing essentials shall we bring our bullens uh depends on which semester you are coming so if you are coming in october uh, september end or october then bring something bullen not everything because things uh, that work in india won't work here in winters that much i can guarantee you <laughs> i know yeah and even if you are coming in for summer semester let's say in march then get a jacket uh, because that will sustain you 
for the month of march or early april because it's still cold 15 16 degrees till april here yeah. Okay. yeah yeah and uh, regarding the other packing essentials i think i had a list of the uh, 200 items wow <laughs> yeah and it it wasn't a list that i created i found it in one of the facebook groups itself mm. so yeah based on that whatever i needed i collected and whatever i did not need i disregarded uh, disregarded so i'm sure maggie noodles must be one of them yeah some spices indian spices are there for sure because europeans don't eat spices much as we indians do Mm, got it. Got it. Yeah. So, uh, and you cook on your own? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know how to cook. So, I think uh, the time which you have in India, you should learn cooking for survival. Yeah, definitely, definitely. For me, it was easy because it's been now more than ten years that I'm living outside my home. So I've gotten the hang of cooking. But people who have lived in their homes their entire lives, they should start learning when they are preparing to come here. to cook a little bit here and there and they learn along the way as well yeah and uh, okay now somebody is asking this question uh, i have read somewhere that german companies don't recruit indian students is that true mm, i if that was true i would not be here first of all because <laughs> i did my research when i was coming here I uh, if that was the case uh, i would not be here and it's not true uh, you would have heard it from one or two indians who are outliers in the entire data uh, but that's not the case uh, there are there can be some cases of some people doing racism uh, but not in the corporate world it's not like you are indian so we will not hire you no that doesn't happen mm-hmm. uh one question i see sir can you please explain how to join for bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering in germany after completing 12th from india this is from akshay uh i don't think people come to germany for bachelor's my sense is that visa for bachelor's is very very difficult to get most of them get rejected what's your sense there yeah uh see it's not uh, there are less cases for people coming for bachelor's uh the other big constraint is uh in india we have 12 grades 1 to 12 in yeah. germany they have 13 so okay. for if any indian is coming here for a bachelor's degree they need to do something called a student in college uh okay. so that's like the bridge that uh, g- measures the gap between the indian education system and german education system and after that you can start your bachelor's and on top of all of that all of these things are in german uh, so bachelors are not very rarely offered in english they are 99.99% time offered in german and student college is also in german i think private universities are now offering these bachelors in germany they are applied sciences universities uh, but visa success rate has been very low i have checked with many of them all of them come back said i did Germany typically is more of a master's market, less of a yeah. bachelor's market. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Even finding the job after bachelor's will be difficult. I think you'll have to do your master's there. Yeah, it it gets a bit tricky uh, because uh, they don't have uh, B Techs like we have in India. They offer BSc degrees. So, okay. and in BSc degrees, you do not get uh, to do any specialization. so it becomes a bit difficult for the employers also but okay on what basis do they hire you what are you specialized in mm-hmm. got it yeah now let's go back to the discussion you were having on the blocked account somebody has asked this question how do i unblock my amount <laughs> how do i unblock the money which i have so i think that is where the whole process of uh, opening a bank account and city registration yeah, comes so, so yeah that's... Okay, just a disclaimer, please. Everybody who is listening, don't be terrified. It's it's uh-huh. kind of a long process, but it's yeah. straightforward. Okay. So the first thing after coming to Germany is you get your health insurance registered, because that is needed to enroll yourself in the university. The offer letter does not mean that you are enrolled in the university. 
it just means that the university has offered you a seat uh, if you want to enroll after your health insurance you enroll in the university then if you have a permanent accommodation then you use that contract and register yourself in the city as a citizen if you do not have a permanent accommodation at that time you can also use a care of letter from your temporal uh, temporary residence where you are staying from the owner of that room or place wherever you are staying after your city registration uh, then you can open your bank account because all of the previously mentioned documents are required to open the bank account after you open your bank account let's say you do not use kotak mahindra you use some online service so the, after opening your bank account the bank will send you the your atm card your pin and all those things and then your account is active then you send this information that okay this is my account number to the blocked account service then they start sending you monthly installments uh, then onwards so they can only withdraw 861 from there for per month yeah from other services as far as i know that is the case but uh, if it's in kotak mahindra then you get access to your entire amount in one go so do you suggest to come to germany 15 days before your semester starts if you have an accommodation you can come 10 days early also uh, because uh, uh, before the semester starts you cannot enroll also and without enrollment your other steps won't be fulfilled so you can just do only your health insurance stuff uh, but if you do not have an accommodation then you can come a bit early and search for accommodation got it and there is one question from vanchika singhania and that is is a 3 year bachelor i am assuming bachelor program acceptable in germany do public universities accept 3 year bachelors yes they do i am not familiar with the details on which uh, bachelor degrees were accepted and what were the individual cases when they were accepted but i have seen people getting into public universities based on a 3 year bachelor degree in india and they have to get the credit equivalence done huh? yeah so it's most uh, about credit equivalence so uh, in germany a bachelor's degree is 180 credits uh, the european credit system so if your bachelor degree can translate some equivalent to that be it a 3 year or a 4 year degree then it should not be a problem got it yeah and um, this is very complicated question which i can see what are the other linguistic skills required like what is a1 and a2 german i don't know uh, one question i think before this uh, hmm. where to learn german language so did you learn german language do you know german language right now or do you don't even know <laughs> yeah i know i i am uh, somewhere on the a2 spectrum right now okay a2 and yeah. uh, did you start learning from india or you only start learning from in germany yeah i started in india itself i started uh, i think 3 months before i came here okay so i learned a1 in india uh, then because of uh, being busy in the university work and all those things i haven't gotten time to practice it enough mm. uh, but i learn here and there and i have gotten to a2 so i can talk to people in supermarkets and all those things ask for directions simple things like that order food in restaurants and based on your friends who have done b1 or b2 how difficult mm-hmm. it is to achieve a b1 or b2 level for german proficiency this is by ankur vaid so uh i have i know people who took one year to achieve b1 and i also know people who took eight months to achieve c1 mm, so it it's very individualistic uh, depends on how motivated you are and how much time can you provide to learning the language uh one question on student visa i, I think i i don't know whether you can answer but based on your experience of other friends who mm-hmm. come uh, do the if anybody is coming to germany for masters do they get a spouse visa or not can they apply for spouse visa i'm not sure you have seen any friend bringing the spouse i know one friend who brought a spouse but the spouse was also studying in one university <laughs> so 
I am sure he did not bring her on her spouse visa. She was her on her own student visa. Yeah, I think my my answer to you will be that spouse visa is not easy to get. Angkor, uh, it's very very difficult, and I think it's not even allowed for a one year or two year course. They don't allow. If you're coming for a PhD, yes, they might allow you, uh, but not for the masters. Uh, Germany will not allow us for. Now uh, let's go to this uh, process of uh, registering the. Uh, you said the city registration. Mm -hmm. uh, does it require you to go to that office or is it online? It's not online. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, in our case, what the university did, they invited uh, uh, the city registration officers from the city registration office. Uh, yeah. two times a week in the first three weeks of the semester. Okay. So they were in the campus and if your documents are in order, you can, instead of going to the citizen's office, you can register yourself in the, the university campus itself. Wow. So if the university provides that, that is the easy option. If not, then you need to go to the citizen's office, stand in line and then do the whole procedure. So I was talking to someone, uh, he told me that Germany was way behind in terms of tech adoption. And because of COVID, now the tech adoption has been increasing. Otherwise, Germany was not very tech savvy. Is it true? Yes, it's very true. They still like to use everything physically or analog. Uh, okay. So as I was saying that any information that you receive, uh, in Germany is not delivered to you by electronic means. You get a physical letter in your mailbox, physical <laughs> mailbox. So in the, I think in the first, yeah, yeah, I think in the first semester, I was getting three to four letters a week. Okay. Yeah. And I okay. think right now I have more than 200 letters that I have uh, accumulated over the two years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. So your your mailbox is very important. That's why you need to have a permanent yes. address. Yes, yes. Okay. That is the most important purpose of that. Because the ATM cards it will be sent to you for my or your yeah. mailbox only. Yeah, yeah. Like in in India, we get the ATM card kit right at the moment when you open the account. But here, when you open the account, they'll just okay take your information, take your documents, then they'll ask you to go away. Then you'll receive your PIN in the next three days. Then your ATM card after that, uh, two days after that. And then your, uh, I think, yeah, that, that's it. If anything else is that you have asked of the bank, that will also come in the physical mail. Nothing will be hand uh, delivered to you in the bank or uh, delivered to you electronically. And... Uh... When you, uh, so okay, one question which I, just picking on this IT thing, which we talked about tech savvy mm -hmm. or not, um, I, what are the, like, is, is, if you are an IT engineer and you, like, mm -hmm. you're a tech engineer, software engineer, whatever you call it, and you come to Germany, if you're looking for part-time jobs, will you be able to find part-time jobs in, in tech? Because I think that is where the most demand is. Yeah, easily. Uh, see. It all comes down to how you present yourself uh, when you are applying for a job. And uh, there are a lot of uh, part-time tech roles available. And uh, it's what my fifth semester now. And I've been involved in some or the other tech part-time role since my second semester. So almost two years now. Uh, so yeah, people do get a job uh, in IT. But if you are, let's say, a mechanical or a chemi chemical engineer, then you can get technical jobs if you know the language that is German. Okay. Because there you need to deal with locals who don't speak English. But in IT, it works out because uh, IT people usually speak English. It's kind of a global language yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah. And Berlin, I believe, is more English speakers than uh, other yeah. cities. Yeah, Berlin's uh, population is more on the younger side. So younger people in Germany, they speak English, uh, whereas the older people, they don't. And Berlin is also the capital of Germany. So it makes sense that people should be speaking English there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And typically, what is the 
wages these guys get let's say i get a internship in a it job how much yeah. can i expect to it it actually depends in internships there is one thing called internship and there is one thing called work student okay. so work student is uh, also a part time in work student you are paid hourly uh, based on the amounts of hour you work mm. uh, the minimum wage i think right now is 9.9 euros per hour for that okay. uh, but for internship uh, you are not getting paid by the hour you will be paid for the entire month and you will be working as you as like as a full time uh, employee okay it ranges from somewhere 1000 to 1500 depending on the company and the location but when you are doing internship is this part of the 960 hours you have to do in a year yes okay that also is 960 hours yeah okay. so i think one question which i can see is how many hours can we work in the first or second year of the masters can we do online work or business along and uh, my answer will be yes you can work up to 960 hours per annum in a, yeah. every year i believe and yes, uh, yes online work is allowed no Good. it's not online work is not allowed freelancing is not allowed on student visa ah, if okay. you are if you are caught then there will be negative consequences to that so so you mean part time jobs cannot be freelancing jobs no no they need to be contracted by somebody who's a german registered company or a uh, something like that okay so okay. if you are so working you... on a site let's say like freelancer.com for a us client or something that is not eligible on the student visa very good asha, asha sahu i believe you know you got your answer i would have been wrong uh, don't do anything like that if you're caught then you will be penalized yeah okay uh, will you recommend any websites to check for accommodation in in are the people using like in india we use this oyos and uh, Um, I don't know Oxford Cap and all those websites. Do you know any website which helps in Germany for accommodation? Yeah, so it's Facebook dot com. <laughs> Go and find so, all the groups in Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. find the groups, join them, uh, and keep looking with an open eye. That okay, yeah. so this information is useful for you. Uh, note it down, put it somewhere for your safekeeping. don't rely that this information will be available later on on the group itself because sometimes people delete that information okay and uh, if you have any questions you can ask in those groups most of the times somebody or the other will answer your question so they are very friendly groups and there are a lot of them i think i was uh, a part of 23 groups when i was coming here so yeah got it, got it. and uh... Uh, so once you come there i think i understand that you get a visa only for 3 months yeah. once you get there you have to extend it uh and what is the process of extension if you can just put some light there yeah so it's not uh, much difficult from the process in india uh like you book an appointment at the foreign office uh, they provide you a form for extension based on your current status uh, for students it's a different form for working people it's a different form so for student they'll give you a form and all the document that you need to submit along with that form are mentioned in the back of the document it, uh, form itself so you fill the form you uh, attach all your documents and then you go on your uh, designated appointment day okay now for the first extension uh, you need to show your remaining blocked account uh but for the next extension onwards you don't need to show the blocked account uh it differs from city to city and from interviewer to interviewer okay. so there is a lot of subjectivity to it but generally it's like that and then they send you a letter uh, a few weeks later up after your appointment that okay collect your residence permit card on this and this date and your visa has been extended for this and this duration and what should be the cost of health insurance they should keep in mind uh it's at least 100 euros per month so 1200 and that is mandatory taken. yeah so you can't live legally in germany without a uh, health insurance 
basically as soon as they come they need to buy health insurance yeah that's the first thing they need to do because without health insurance they cannot even enroll themselves in the university and that is paid monthly yes every month you have to pay is it part of the living cost they should assume 10000 yes yeah uh, so in the amount that german government recommends it's covered in that that okay you will be paying your rent so an average of that rent and the health insurance and your living expenses is covered in that amount yeah and uh, got it so basically you need to uh, come and take as so is there a preferred company of health insurance like how many options are there where they should go and it depends on city to city in magdeburg right now there are five that i know of. and okay so it is city specific health insurance no 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 it's uh, uh, applicable throughout the euro but uh, uh, not every health insurance provider has an office in the city in every okay. city right so in my city where i'm staying there are five health insurance providers so i selected the one that my seniors recommended to me so and i have not used it so i can't really say which one is better and which provides better benefits because more or less they all are the same uh, a lot of things are covered in that insurance premium that you are paying per month like uh, once in 6 months or once in a year you can go for free dental cleaning uh, and your eyesight can, can be checked for free in that uh, things like that there are a lot of things that are covered in that and and you are lucky that you have never been to a hospital in germany but i, I believe the health insurance covers even the opd expenses uh what's opd sorry opd like uh, if you have a fever or something you just need to go and see the doctor is this covered in health insurance or that's paid separately yes 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 it is until unless it's a very specific disease uh, that requires a specialist uh, then there might be cases that either you need to provide the entire Uh, money from your pocket or health insurance only provides half but it's a, if it's a normal thing like fever or cold then you can go to a uh, physician and then he'll prescribe you something got it uh i believe this question i can also answer how much time you live after mask i think you live a long don't worry <laughs> question who should have been how much time we are allowed to work in germany or whatever live for search of job uh so after doing your masters you are allowed to uh, you you can move to job search visa and it is for 18 months uh, where you can find a job and do a job if you get a full time job then you can move to the working visa am i right yes yes okay so yes so after that you can get to a working visa till the time 18 months you have to find a job uh now uh when you are completing you and i i know i know you will be completing in some time so you have not been tried uh when do you apply for your job search visa is it before you complete your degree or after you complete degree so the at max you have to apply when you give your thesis defense okay. so uh, and the procedure is more or less that you will get your degree in 2 weeks after your defense if everything goes well and you need to convert or start the procedure to convert your student visa to a, either a job seeker visa or a working visa based on whether you got a job or not so that's the most you can delay uh, but if you have got a job then it's recommended you start the procedure a bit earlier uh, because it takes at least 6 weeks to get the visa procedure done entirely and uh, if you are sure that okay you will be applying for a job seeker visa also then uh, starting the procedure is always recommended a bit early uh yogesh sutar is asking uh, what about the second year block account in our case anyway it is not relevant but in case you are going for two year course do you need to show the block account again in second year when you are extending the visa 99% of the cases you do not but uh, there has been some exceptions where some offices visa offices or foreign offices in some parts of germany have asked for a blocked account for the second year but 99% of the time it doesn't happen and for the jobs 
so seeker visa do they need to show some blocked account for the job seeker visa there are two options that you can take one is either show the blocked account uh, like you did when you came for the first time or the second option is you somehow show them that you are going to earn 800 euros per month on a part time job to sustain yourself and how important so you have started learning the german language before you came to germany you said you did give one were all your friends doing it or is it okay that you come and learn german language once you are in germany yeah i have some friends who through this did do not know how to speak german they are doing well uh, one of them recently got a job also so it's not like it's a hindrance uh, it's like you have this big pool Uh, if you know both english and german if you don't know german the pool shrinks a little got it got it yeah so yeah it's sustainable if you don't know german but it's highly advisable uh, if especially if you're going to live in a small city because in big cities people speak english in small cities the ratio decreases and uh, there is a question which is asking at which program did tarun pursue in ovgu they want to know what are you pursuing there uh, my program is called digital engineering and i am pursuing data science as a specialization all right very good now there are some people who want to know about mechanical engineering so i i don't know whether you will be able to answer this question or not but they have a very specific question that mechanical engineers get preference when finding job in germany is it true i don't know why where the people are getting this information from i am very curious know. to know yeah. <laughs> uh, no it's not the case it's a very individual uh, thing it depends on how skilled you are how you present yourself be it a mechanical engineer a civil engineer or a it engineer depends uh, on the job description what is the company requiring do you have the skill sets and how you present them and how you do in the interview yeah i know so, and my sense is that if you are skilled you will find a job yeah, yeah. so if if the and, question was is, are there jobs for mechanicals or other fields there are jobs for every field in german that much i can say it just it depends whether you are skilled enough to secure a job yeah yeah and skilling is what you get in germany yeah and and one question with jay lakshmi naidu and i think she does she has asking question should we need to do part time jobs over there or we can live without doing part time job so answer if you have i think 861 euros in your bank account and you can pay the fees uh, do you still need to do a job there see part time job is a, again an individual preference after coming here i did not want the money to come from india after the blocked amount gets finished so i started doing part time and it since i was doing technical jobs it also was going in my resume Uh, building my profile yeah, as well that's very important i believe yeah. yeah so it was kind of a double edged sword for me uh, because uh, i did, first i did not want money from india and second it will build my profile as well but if somebody who feels like that they don't want to pressure themselves with a part time job they can definitely study alone uh, it's just that uh, for your extensions they'll ask you some type of sustenance to show how you will be able to survive after your blocked account So for me, it was my part-time jobs. I showed my contract that okay, I'm working here and here, and that's how I'll be able to survive. But if you are not doing part-time, then you'll need to arrange the money somehow, either from your parents or some other place. I don't know how. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, when you are doing part-time jobs, are you expected to pay taxes? Uh, yes. It's not a tax per se. It's more of a pension thing that everybody pays whoever is working in germany and uh, after you retire and you are living in germany you get that money back is kind of pf which you deduct not the tax yeah it's it's more or less like that uh, okay. for part time jobs it's that uh, and uh, it also depends how much you are earning in a year okay. so if it there is a certain threshold if you cross that then you need to pay some amount of tax as well but most people do not reach that amount 
got it. And uh, one question, I think Chinmay Tripathi has been typing. I think he has copy pasted this question again and again, and I just take it up. Uh, I know very difficult for us to answer. He wants to know admission process in MA English in public university. So, do public universities offer <clears throat> such subject like MA English or other literature subjects? I am not sure, but my question. Um, I have a question to this person who asked this question. Why do you want to do a literature degree? That too in English in German. If you want <laughs> to do a literature degree in English, I'll yeah. recommend doing it in an English speaking country, UK or something. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm I'm sure there will be some or the other program like this for Germans who want to study, uh, but. my recommendation will be to do it in a native english speaking country but public universities are mostly offer technical courses or they also have uh, courses in uh, non technical field non stem field they have in every domain uh, in my university has economics department also they have uh, humanities department so they offer courses the seats are very limited as compared to the engineering courses uh, and i rarely see any indian in those courses um, those are mostly either germans or some other european country and do they offer mbas uh, public universities mm, not to my knowledge but yeah, i can yes. be wrong here uh, but no they offer uh, msc degrees yeah that's what my sense was mostly it's msc not mba yeah got it and now uh, people are asking this question again and again so i'll just pick this up now so everybody believes germany education is free uh so how do they get this free education so i think we covered in the last webinar as well in detail yeah. if you want to get into a public university for free what is what a student needs to have to get this free education from germany what ielts score what gre score what gmat score Uh, what is the academic information so just quickly a summary i think that will help people yeah so one is a good uh, cgpa or a percentage in your bachelor's so i'll recommend at least 7 uh, because the, that is the least i know in my friends group uh, who has the cgpa and then for my course it was 8 ielts at that time and they did not require gre at that time but now they need gre as well uh gre mostly they focus on the quantitative aspect not the english because for english they are already asking you to take ielts then your a great statement of purpose very good recommendation letters and i think that kind of sums up everything do they need to have work experience no i have people here who just came directly after their bachelor's as well it depends on their bachelor's uh, how is it compatible to the master program that they are applying uh, whether the bachelor provided them the prerequisite knowledge for that master program okay so yeah in case you're going then you need to have a relevance of your bachelor's course yeah and they can start applying before their final semester is over yeah yeah definitely okay because universities then, provide provisional degrees so they can use them while applying okay what if the international student faces some kind of problem in germany and no personal relative lives there who will help them in difficult situations i believe there are police but yeah go ahead answer this yeah uh, i don't have any relative living in germany i'm staying here it's, yeah, it's about uh, you can go to international office if you are looking from the university sides help every university has an international office and they are very helpful so any problem anything you can go to them and the uh, other thing is if when you will come here you'll slowly make friends so you can always go to them for help and the worst case you talk to uh, your family in india somehow they find a connection in, uh, nearby you and, and they can help you that's the worst case if you need to go that far but and the first two should be sufficient enough okay and 
how are the people of germany are they friendly or are they reserved this is question from shelly pandit uh they are both depends on who you talk to i have found both type of people but uh, more or less the younger people are much more friendlier than the old people and i think that's true for every country not only germany got it and uh, there is a question which i think i should we should answer in germany do higher rank universities get better jobs or have advantages over lower rank universities like in india so the question is iit versus i don't know which which university to talk about mit let's say yeah. so uh, when you go for application for job do they look at your university or they look at your thesis as a main thing okay the first thing that i should make clear is germany do not have university rankings like india does uh, or us does uh, if you are a research based university then you are as equal as other research based university so there is no difference the things that employer will look is what are the projects that you did in your masters how are they relevant to the job that you are applying and what are the courses that you took the grades matter but not too much uh, you don't want to be the poorest of students and then without any reason to support that okay this was the reason that i have a bad grade but it should be fair enough not high is not expected and then if you have any previous experience that helps yeah so, i think that's more important you your relevant work experience and your project and your thesis should be the one to determine you yeah. definitely uh i think this we have already answered how much does the health insurance cost and what things does it cover it covers everything uh, i believe except uh, the not specialized but a lot of things but a lot of things uh I received, I think, a hundred and eight page booklet from my health insurance provider. That okay, okay. this is what we cover. Uh, so I'm sure it covers a lot of things. If I need be, <laughs> fortunately uh, enough, uh, I have not required that. Hundred eight euros, eight euros for hundred eight page booklet. So <laughs> one euro <laughs> per booklet. <laughs> uh, one question which is coming, I don't know whether you can answer this, but just checking with you, can we extend the eighteen month job search visa? So let's say eighteen month job search visa is coming to an end. And you still haven't found a job. Do they allow extension? I am not so sure, but mostly no. Mostly no. Because eighteen months is already a very relaxed time as compared to other countries. Mm-hmm. How important is German language for admission? Was this a requirement for you to learn A one, or it was just uh, your? No, it was my choice. My program no... is entirely in English, so okay. the university does not need me to know German. yeah uh, the program's statement is that you can finish your entire program by doing courses that are offered in english so yeah i did not learn because of university i learned it because you know i wanted to communicate with the locals a little better uh, that's all got it got it and how difficult was it for you to manage your studies and your part time job i think i've managed it well enough uh because my grades are uh, in the top tier i'll say uh, i'm not sure how familiar are people are with the german grading criteria but it's in kind of the top tier and last semester i was doing three part time jobs and till the last week i was doing three part time jobs at the same time got it so so, so basically your you can manage the workload yeah it's it's dependent on how you do your time management and your resource management i think i could do it better because i worked in india for two and a half years so during my experience i learned these things how to manage better your time and your resources so yeah it's not like that people who have not worked can't do that they can also do that but it's doable and not everybody needs to do three part time jobs at the same time it was my own personal <laughs> choice i'll not recommend it <laughs> got it got it and uh, i think this i'll just answer asha sahu is asking in usa during first 9 months of masters we can't work off campus is it true for germany as well uh, no, germany and yeah germany does not have any requirement of not working off campus that is only us specific requirement that you cannot work off campus in us 
I'll pick one last question. Let's say this again. Divyam, you are asking this question again and again. Which state is good for aeronautics? The reason I was not picking this question because I don't think Tarun knows about. But Tarun, if you know anything, just help Divyam. He has asked this for seven, eight times now. Uh, again, as what I did for such of my uh, interested courses, uh, I'll recommend the same for aeronautics. Uh, yeah. Uh, go to the website daad.d where yeah. all the courses are listed. Filter them out. See which universities you are interested in. Then go to their website. Check. what courses they offer what interest uh, what courses interest you and then decide on that because there is no universal answer to okay this is the best program for computer science in this university or things like that okay. at least in germany and, yeah i think i saw two questions on iu i'll just answer uh, one is that do you recommend iu for masters yes heavily recommend you for iu masters um, what you are getting here is uh, cheaper affordable i'll say high quality but affordable education uh, you're saving one year uh, of not going germany and you can start today rather than waiting for the borders to open uh, in terms of the career options i think german uh, iu has a established career services career center which helps you find jobs uh, they were known for helping students find their jobs their their sister concern is called career partner which was meant for provide helping student people find jobs they have 3500 recruitment partners so so yes if you're looking for a job you will find a lot of support from iu international university of flight sciences and now i think we have come to the end uh, of our session i think there are a lot of questions or the same question repeated multiple times i know divyam gupta has been how to hunt for part time jobs this was the last question parivesh rakesh it's it's the same for every job hunt you go to yeah. portals you look whether any company is looking for a part time job part time student or something like that in the university there are bulletin boards where the notifications are listed that okay this is and this company or this and this research group is looking for some student and there are university newsletters also that you should join which forward you any uh, job description they receive from the companies Got it. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was say saying, uh, yeah, if you are looking for a non-technical job, like an odd job or something, there are consultancies in uh, Germany. So you just go go to them and tell them that okay, you want to work, and they'll yeah. tell you okay, we have this and this available, whether you want to work there or not, like a pizza factory or McD or a tissue factory or things like that. Great, great. Thanks a lot for time, Tarun. I know you had an exam. You must be tired, but all the best for finishing your degree. And we will thank you. Surely reach out to you once again sometime uh, to yeah. answer the questions yeah. of our. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Bye.